Uh, it has been a bit since we had a chance to talk to uh, Yakima County Sheriff Bobby Dell, and he is in the studio. He has been disarmed. We are both in handcuffs, however, and we'll explain what that's all about. As the morning news gets underway now here at News Talk 1280 KIT. Good morning, Chief. Kidding. Just kidding. Do we got it? We just, uh, we we got his mic on? Are we plugged in? Try it again there, Bob. All right. All right. How's that? There, beautiful. That sounds perfect. All right. Oh, it's been a year, Chief. I, I want to call you Chief, but uh, uh, Sheriff, good morning, Sheriff. Nice to have you in. Good morning. Hey, it's good to be here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> been a year since we saw you here. Um, how do you like the job? What, what, uh, what, what's the best and the worst about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, the worst. That's having to we do always start with like, the worst. <laughs> you know, do shows like this, right? From time yeah, time. I've learned. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe I might put this at number uh, one. But, uh, you know, the worst is, is probably that it's the inability to make everybody happy in this kind of job. Yeah. You're just not going to. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, you know, you can't learn that as a, as a brand-new police officer. The decisions uh, are always going to make somebody upset. But when you're uh, like a sheriff or police chief, you're kind of at the point of the spear. And everything you say is going to get a reaction. That's what you expected, though. It is. I mean, it is you know, what I expected. You, you, how long were you a deputy? I have thirty years. Thirty years. So yeah, you you knew the you knew the job. You expected that. All right. The best part of it. The best part is it's an opportunity uh, to positively affect our county, and I truly mean that. I've lived here my entire life. The only time I was gone is like for four years when I went to Deb ASU. Came back. Heck, I still live on the same 40 acres that I grew up on. Yeah. And I, I like this huh. valley. I think this is an awesome place to live. And I think we can do better in a lot of things. <laughs> there we right. go. That's right. Well, what, what kind of changes have you brought to the, to the office? And, and, and are they changes that, that the public would see? Yeah, I think the public are going to see some of our changes. You know, a big push for me right now is to make our, our department as modern and efficient as possible. I don't have a lot of deputies. As a matter of fact, not, we have a very, very small sheriff's office. So it's important that when that deputy shows up at your house, he has all the tools he needs and the training to make him really, really uh, efficient and effective. Uh, we have a big push on new software systems, uh, a new brand new policy manual, uh, a new system we're just getting going to track uh, internal investigations, complaints against the officers, so that we know exactly what's going on, trends, and make sure we're doing that right. That's important that the public understand that, that we are very, very in tune with what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. There's always an opportunity to change, and uh, that's what we're moving forward on. It's like anything else in management. You have to, you have to track stuff. You know, if, yeah. you're, if you don't like – that's one of the things that I always used to – when I was, like, running radio uh, – TV news departments back in the day as a news director – and, you know, you have young reporters fresh out of school. They're going to make mistakes. And so they would. And then you'd have to, like, write it down, put it in a file. Because if you don't, uh, you don't have some kind of tracking system. You need to track good as well as, as negative. But if you don't have some kind of management system, you can't properly, accurately, fairly change behaviors, change uh, reward behaviors. So management tools like policy books and tracking systems like that, they make all the difference in the world for a, a real sense of, open and fairness for everybody, don't they? Absolutely. And that's what the public expects. And they should have that expectation of us. You know, as police officers and deputy sheriffs, uh, we should be open to review at all times. And not just our what we do at work, but our public lives. We should be people that people should respect and trust. And to do that, we have to be open. Like you said, Dave, people have to be able to trust us. they got to be able to look and see what we're doing. And it's it's it is a different world from when I started 30 years ago. You know, I started with, we didn't have computers in the cars, I had a notebook, and everything I did was handwritten. Huh, well. Now, today, if our computer systems go down, the deputies don't know if they can even go to work. You know, it's that big <laughs> yeah. of a deal. Yeah. It's, and so, right. you know, number one, you look what our, the people that work for the sheriff's office are the number one thing that we have going for us. But number two now is the technology. That is everything. And we are spending more money on technology than we ever have before. But it's cheaper than labor costs. And it makes us more effective. Yeah, good. Good technology can almost have you be in two places at once without having to pay benefits, right? Yeah, for two right. guys. That's right. <laughs> you know, I, Sheriff, I, I was just uh, reading a story about how you guys back in August uh, had some help with uh, from the Yakima County Sheriff's Office got some, got some help from uh, the Yakima Office of Emergency Management with a drone. Oh, yeah, and that's it, right. And now, now, the drone belongs to the Yakima Valley Office of Emergency Management, right? It does. Okay. 
But but boy, that really helps you guys. Now, how can so you guys call them out on certain times when you need them? Huh? Absolutely. If we if we're looking for somebody, uh, we'll we'll call them out. Uh, and so, it might not just be for a criminal offense, but maybe someone that's lost. Maybe Jeremy's like a hiding kid. in a cornfield somewhere. They're right. in cornfields. Get an eye on if it. you guys have never been in a cornfield, they are nasty places. <laughs> and you, if someone goes in those things, and yeah. they're hard to find. Yeah. I've I've chased people into cornfields. Yeah. And where's the best place to find somebody? It's from above. And the the drone that they have is is top notch, and it has the the camera and infrared and all that sort of thing. And so maybe you saw the video on our on our Facebook. I did yeah. uh, it's just something else. You can see that fur missile zipping through the corn. It's something we just didn't have, to, you know, the ability to do years ago. Yeah. yeah, great, great use of technology there. Fantastic because you really boy, you send a deputy in there or something, and then they they risk a life and. We don't need that, that's for sure. No, what we want to do is, is go to the place where I can have a drone like that, probably with every squad, so we don't have to wait for a, for a drone to show up. It just, it's better, especially for tracking someone who's lost, and, and we have some, a, a technology, a resource like that right there on the scene. Because this is a big county. Sometimes it's not good we have to wait for an hour for a drone to show up. If we have it with the deputies, much, yeah. much better. Sheriff, um, if... Uh if there was a message that you could, if you had a Yakima in front of you right now. And he does. And, and, uh, and, and there was something that you'd like to tell him about the Yakima County Sheriff's Office. What is it? You know, we're here to help. Don't ever, ever think that you can't call us. Call us and we will come out and do what we can for you. I don't know how many times I've heard people tell me, well, I don't want to bother you. No, that, we're in the job of being bothered. Yeah. Call us. And it's no crime is too petty. Nothing is too little for us to to at least talk to you about. That's that's a big, big deal. And if you don't tell us, then we don't know what's going on. Right on. Right on. One of the things sure. that's happened here recently, Lance, if I may, is that's the, the success that the Yakima Police Department had teaming up with some other agencies in their operation Invictus uh, or whatever it was. Was that what it was called? Right. Yes. Right. And they are, were you kept up to speed on that? And do you have those same uh, options if, if you guys uh, had – a case or a situation that would call for that sort of multi-jurisdictional approach that uh, the, the, the police apparently used so well over the course of the summer. Is that an option? Of oh, absolutely. We were very involved in that as well. Oh. Yeah, we had deputies working overtime uh, with that, that team, and it was extremely effective. Geez, just a little bit under 300 uh, felon, felons were, were captured. Uh, we have uh, in this county a regular task force, much, much smaller scale, made up of uh, the Department of Corrections, ourselves, the Yakima Police Department, and the uh, the is it U.S. Marshals yeah. called the Violent uh, Crimes Task right. Force, right. Yeah. Right. and exactly. so that on a smaller scale, that's going on all the time. And uh, it's you know really when you look at how almost every agency in this county is pretty small staffed. We just you know you don't see cops running all over the place, do you? So the only way we really can be effective is if we join forces. And it happens with us on a daily basis, especially down in the lower valley. There might only be two or three deputies working down there. So we rely constantly on the smaller agencies, the cities and towns down there, to back us up. They come out, they help us, and we go help them. Excellent. Well, again, uh, maximize the manpower that you do have, team up, share information. Um, it's a, as you say, it's the different... It's a different age today than 30 years ago. It's it's different, I think, in that regard, in the willingness to share and the willingness to get involved. There's a lot of uh, historical, um, my sense is that there's been historical sort of territorialism and that sort of stuff. But you guys, everybody seems to really want to just hook arms and get her done today, don't they? It is better. And when I started, there were a lot of, I like to call them kingdoms. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, <laughs> unfortunately, some of, those, some of those issues were probably at the top of the pyramid, not at the bottom. You know, officers and deputies have historically got along pretty good. But now we're in an era where even at the top, at the management level, they see the value of, of working together. We meet on a regular basis with uh, management from Yakima Police Department. That didn't used to happen. Uh, it's just we're too low on resources individually. we got to be together. If you were to have to define the, the biggest problem facing the county sheriff's department in terms of types of crimes, is it is it the property crime, the, the break-in type stuff? What What is it that... Uh, um, keeps your guys the busiest. You know? it, it is property crime. I mean, we have our fair share of violent crime, uh, but crop, property crime is is kind of a, an issue that just won't go away. It's a big county again. There's not a lot of deputies, and rural areas are always susceptible to property crime. It is, it is a fact of life, living out away from other people. 
uh, that makes it easier for criminals to take advantage of good people. So we often heard, you know, engrave your stuff, uh, alert your neighbors if you're going to be gone. I mean, all those uh, tried and true things are still what we're recommending. Uh, do we see uh, security cameras? Do we see more of those out in rural areas? Oh, yeah, think? a lot more of that. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of options for people to take care of their property. The cameras, the alarm systems, you know, I live out in the county, and I tell you, I would not live out there without some sort of alarm system. It's a big deal. Because there's only so many deputies, everybody that lives here has got to take a certain amount of responsibility for their own safety and for their property. Yeah. And we see a, a lot of pretty neat systems. And digital systems, when you're talking about cameras, they're so much better than they used to be. I remember when I started, people had security cameras. You go to their house and they go, there it is. I've got footage of the bad guy. Then you look at it. You think, well, that's a gray and black blob, right? You can't. <laughs> so <laughs> but, if we see any gray and black blobs uh, running around. That's right. <laughs> but now, I mean, this new technology, the cameras, even very reasonably priced stuff, has amazing uh, definition. You know, what if you work with somebody that you think may be involved in some criminal activity and you want to <laughs> sort of like alert you without alerting them? I don't know why you're looking to Lance. Is there a way? To, no? Okay, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk off there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Sheriff, uh, I guess to, to wrap it up, you know, we, we could talk to you another half an hour about the gun laws that... Uh, that are out there or maybe uh, maybe an hour uh, yeah that's right um but i guess that you really quickly touch on that uh it's it's um it's not your intention to defy laws but it's not your intention to i guess to uh to institute a law that you disagree with in terms of our second amendment rights right that's right you know the second amendment all the amendments are pretty darn important to law enforcement as a whole we we take an oath to protect the constitution uh, for this state and for the, you know, the national constitution. It's, it's just something that we always think about. You know, brand new cops. We talk about the constitution all the time when we're trained. And so we get out here, that's what we're going to do. As far as the gun laws, it's important uh, with my limited resources that I enforce the laws that this community wants, works best, and is the most effective. We can't take time and, and, and enforce laws that don't generally work. It's discretion. You know, discretion is the bedrock of United States law enforcement. There's thousands of laws on the books. Do we enforce those every day? No. Do officers pick and choose what they're going to enforce? They do. That's why this morning, Lance, you didn't get that speeding ticket. No, that's right. Because <laughs> you get hey. that's right. yeah. No, but you're right. Yes. You're right. right. There's, there's times discretion. where there's things someone might end up doing something that's really right. serious, not go to jail because the officer decides that's not the best route for that person. And so when it says define laws, now we use discretion. Uh, I want laws that, that are effective, that are tools for me and the deputies to reduce crime. That's what I'm looking for. 758, a conversation with Sheriff Bob Udell. Uh, Sheriff, uh, from me personally, I think you guys are doing a fantastic job keeping the, keeping the public informed. Um, unlike other agencies here in the Valley who do not have uh, a public uh, contact, a, a, a spokesperson, you do, um, a, along with your, your Twitter and Facebook and Instagram pages, uh, I think you do, you do a great job in keeping everyone informed, uh, not just through the media, but through social and, media as well. And we're going to get better. Right on. We're going to get better. At that. Love it. Love it. Tell Casey's doing a great job. Really like that. He guy. is, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. Good to see you, Sheriff. Yeah. Good to see you in. guys. Thank you. You bet. We'll All right. do it again. We won't wait so long next time. Exactly. But we, we know you're busy because you're a busy guy. But we'll have you back, sir. We I'll promise. enjoy coming back. Great. Thank you so much.